Hi, I'm Dana. Welcome to Things I've Learned, where I try to um, plant seeds of wisdom based on my first 50 years of life experiences. I am an intuitive healer and a teacher, and I have had a very interesting and colorful life, as most 50 or beyond year olds have. And I'm hopeful that by giving you these little talks and planting these little seeds for thought, I can help you to live a healthier life, make choices that pertain more to you and your worth and your health and coming from a place of, of love. So if this resonates with you, I would invite you to please like the, the episode and if you haven't already, please subscribe. And most importantly of all, if you listen to this and it, and it just is making you think, hmm, so-and-so could really stand to hear this kind of thing, please share. Because the biggest part of things I've learned is to get the message out. I, I just really, my intention is to share and touch as many people as I can and hopefully inspire people to live a healthier life for themselves. Okay, so today's topic is <clears throat> we cannot make people feel and they can't make us feel. I know that sounds extremely contrary to what you have all learned and grown up with. I think that as a society, it, it, its insidiousness is um, <clears throat> next to none. It is everywhere and we use the idea of not hurting people's feelings or having our feelings hurt to uh, avoid confrontation, to avoid having difficult conversations, to uh, not address things in a timely manner. And so I felt very strongly that it would be a great topic for things I've learned because I've stopped doing that. I've stopped saying, you make me feel. And I've also stopped thinking in my head, I feel so bad because I made that person feel a certain way. So I thought I would share my tools and my little like self-talk around it to hopefully help some of you. So let's start with us. We cannot make people feel anything. If I say a statement and three people are in front of me, those three people hear and take in that statement based on themselves, their history, and their personality. And so to one person, my statement might be completely bland and neutral. And to the next person, it can be absolutely infuriating. And to the third person, it can make them feel all warm and fuzzy inside. It's not about what I said. It's about what they heard and how it was received. And depending on what's going on between their ears or in their heart, we they may um, completely miss take the entire statement. Please keep that in mind when people tell you that you hurt them. You made me feel, you hurt me. I would caution greatly the, I'm so sorry I did that. That is everybody's initial reaction because we never wanna be responsible for lowering somebody else's vibration, for hurting their feelings, for making them sad, for making them angry. But what if you didn't? What if you just sit back and count to 10 in your head or take a couple deep breaths in and out and then you say something much more neutral like, I'm sad that you heard what I said that way or bummer or I understand how you feel. That was not my intention not to convince just to convey okay we aren't in charge of other people's feelings let me go back i've said it before i'll say it probably a million other times it's none of our business what other people think of us right because we're not in charge of that we're also not in charge of their feelings so let's flip the coin people say unkind or hurtful things a lot 
but a lot of them are could be flippant comments or passive aggressive comments or passive comments or just aggressive comments and we receive the information we deduce our body, our ego, our physiology, and our cellular memory are where the deduction of what that statement does to us come from. So I'm gonna challenge you. When people upset us or offend us or hurt our feelings, it is really an opportunity for us to sit with the discomfort. What if you sit with like, okay, why? did that hurt my feelings so much? Or why was I so afraid when that person acted that way or said that thing? Unless obviously they're coming at you like, you know, fist raised or something. That's not the situation I'm talking about here. Verbal aggression is verbal aggression. That's all it is. So if we can stay in our power and neutralize the aggression with neutral language and not receiving it, it loses its, its sting. So please, I'm gonna summarize everything. Please, please feel free to take my tools with you. When people say things to us that strike a nerve or hurt our feelings, I tend to take some deep breaths and stay in my body. The first thing everybody wants to do is flee. Or if you are, if it's time to have a difficult conversation with someone, family members, or, you know, we're all individuals. And so there will be times when you disagree. But what I'm challenging you on is, what if that's okay? What if it's okay to disagree? And you can set aside the emotion because they can't make you feel and you can't make them feel. And you just come to the table with these two different sides to the story and you explain your portion and that other person explains their portion and if you can't if you agree to disagree then so be it but again it's not diving into the emotion and emotion takes us out of our body and out of our rational mind so take some deep breaths if you can count to 10 before responding remember you know, set ego aside and remember that you cannot make anybody feel. So when they say to you, you hurt my feelings, you can have some little phrases. I understand. It makes me sad that, you know, you interpreted it that way. Or I, I, I'm, I'm sad that, you know, this is, this has transpired. Let's come back to the table and, you know, work it out. So it doesn't have to stay in emotion. If you just keep in mind that, you can't make anybody feel anything, and they can't make you feel anything. So, those are my seeds for thought today. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Have a wonderful day, and till next time. Namaste.